What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Brian Watkins, and welcome to another edition of the Brian Watkins Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Pastor Bo. Well, 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 thank you, Brother Brian of the Brian Watkins Channel. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. Creeping up on that 2.3 million viewers. Well, well, well. Thank My. You, Say, I don't think they heard you. Thank you, viewers. Yeah, that's from Brother Brian, and a thank you from me as well. Who is me? I'm Pastor Frederick Bowden of the As We Gather Ministries. Brothers and sisters, my dear, dear brother is kicking back and, well, not actually taking it easy. I'm talking about Pastor Robert Demjanovic, but he's kicking back and he's looking through scriptures to come up with the message is going to be for this Sunday. Well, 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 the As We Gather Ministries is continuously growing. That's partially because of you, you 2.3 million viewers. Thank you. Thank you. Tune in yet again to the www.awgm.us site and hit that like and share button while you're there. And if you haven't subscribed, do that too. Brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to be able to come to you today with a word and a message from the Lord. I thank you, uh, Father God, for blessing me to be able to be one of his many servants to bring that message and that word. Amen. Amen. Please, at this time, join me for prayer. Most gracious and loving and heavenly Father, in Christ Jesus' name, I thank you for another day. I thank you for another day to be able to serve you, serve you by serving up your very word and your message unto your children, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for everyone who continues to tune in to the Brian Watkins channel in order to see and hear your very word coming at them. Father God, we need you. We need you constantly. And we thank you for always being ready and available for us. For your very word says, you'll never leave us or forsake us. And I say thank you, Lord. And in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to continue to come back to you again and again and again. And I thank God for allowing me to do so. And I just ask that you again, again, and again, push that share button. It don't take nothing but a half of a second. Boop, hit that button, and before you know it, all of your viewers, whatever channels you may belong to or you may have of your very own, it goes out to all of them as well. Brothers and sisters, join me, please. We're going to look uh, in the book of First Peter. The book of Ver uh, the book of First Peter, chapter four, verse sixteen. And we're going to check out another verse as well, but we're going to start there. God's word reads, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Well, praise God for that word. Praise God for that word. As long as as you're living in this realm of the flesh and the spirit, you're going to go through some suffering. You're going to go through some suffering. And the only reason that you may not understand what I just said is because you're probably still a toddler. <laughs> okay. But when you get to a uh, age or uh, not just in numbers, um, but in maturity of, gaining understanding as in understanding the meaning of life you're going to be like oh wow yeah i understand what suffering is all about but brothers and sisters god says if you suffer as a christian now you may say well stop right there explain yourself better yet explain god's word because that's what you're reading isn't it well brothers and sisters yes yes i am i'm reading god's word and it's letting us know about this life so that we'll never, ever be caught off guard. So many people wonder, why do I go through what I go through? Why do my children 
Why do my parents, why do my good friends go through what they're going through? They're going through a form of suffering. But if you suffer as a Christian, what I'm speaking of, being talked about, lied on and laughed at, you may say, well, I experienced those things and I'm not a Christian. Yeah, but if you become a Christian, believe in God, follow God's very word, Holy Scriptures, the Bible, understand what it is saying. And the best way to do that is to find you a Bible study to go to that does not exclude you from getting up close and personal with God by yourself. In other words, get a group to study God's word with, and then you go to yourself in that prayer closet, uh, a lone spot, whether it's in your home, in your car, at the neighborhood park, your basement, your attic, your garage, your backyard, wherever it is where you can get you some peace and quiet so you can talk to God and study his word, do it. Get you a Bible dictionary and a Bible concordance. It'll break down God's word in Greek and Hebrew. You can have one word on four pages. And on each page, that exact same word can have a different meaning. Just like the uh, words uh, that we use today. We will say one word uh, and then we'll use it in another context, which will throw it all out of whack because it means something totally different. Well, brothers and sisters, God wants us to study his word. Now, as far as suffering, suffering for his word, yeah, there are people who will turn their eyes up and twist their noses around when they see that you picking up holy scriptures and putting down that playgirl or playboy issue. Oh, yeah, you was OK when you were showing who's the hottest centerfold for this month. But now that you opening up Holy Scriptures and talking about Christ Jesus, talking about salvation, talking about won't you repent? That means to change the way that you live in, then that's when the attitudes come swinging at you. Well, you're talking about suffering for Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, this is just you studying and living your life for you. We haven't got to talking to others about Christ, but this is just you studying scripture and living your life for Christ all on your own. People will look and have an attitude because you decided to stop doing what they're doing. Worldly, fleshly, old nature things. And you started to do the things of Christ. So you know when you come at others, asking them to come to church with you? How about let's get together and do a Bible study? How about you want to watch a movie? Well, let's go watch the Passion of the Christ. Oh, it's really going to come at you then. You may get some of that attitude of just because you change, now you want everybody else to change. Well, first of all, that's the God that's in you that you accept it. Amen. Amen. For Holy Scripture says to love your neighbor as you love yourself after you love God with everything you have, your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole being. And I'm paraphrasing it. My Lord and Savior Christ Jesus told us this out of his very lips. This in his word, because his words is out of his very lips as well. Amen. Amen. But well, brothers and sisters, we must never forget, once we accept Christ in our lives, just like it was not forced upon us, we can't force it upon no one else. But never, ever stop opening up yourself to invite someone in. Invite someone in, not just into your life, but into the life of being a Christian. Brothers and sisters, God's words goes on to say, let me read, it's, it's, it's one verse. Let me read the whole verse. First Peter chapter four, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, 
but let him glorify God on this behalf. So when people do give you that attitude, they get to bounce their head back like a rubber chicken. They get to smacking their lips, turning up their lips, all because you decided to live your life for Christ. God said, glory. God says, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You glorify God because finally you're doing what God wants you to do. Finally, you're doing what God wants us all to do. He's no respecter of persons. He wants us all to live a Christ-like life, but he doesn't force himself upon us. But because you chose to live your life for Christ and you got people coming up against you, don't you hold your head down. Don't you go run and hide your head in the dirt or in the sand like an ostrich. No, you hold your head up high. You take that 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 tongue lashing, that eye crossing, you take that that what's supposed to be shame and you turn that around into gladness and, and, and glorifying. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. I'm being persecuted. People going to look at you, what? Like you can lost your mind. No, I haven't lost my mind because of Christ Jesus. I found my mind and I placed my mind on God and not worldly things. And because of it, I'm being attacked by the world. But you know what? Glory, 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 and praise God because I'm living my life for Christ. And that's the only thing that truly, truly matters in this world. Brothers and sisters, the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 11 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So you decide to live your life for Christ, have you? And there's people around you that's called themselves dogging you out because of your decision. 